What's going on guys? Let's go ahead and get straight into it. I uh, got a couple things to talk about in this video, mainly uh, my Collecticon recap, and then briefly we're gonna talk about the CT scanning issue. I don't care if other people have opposing opinions about this, that's fine, we can always have different opinions, but I do think this is gonna continue to be a big issue for the hobby. Um, and then uh, I have some incredible news, um, a really big card that I didn't think I was gonna end up finding or picking up for the right price. I told you guys there's a couple cards that I'm willing to um, pick up and basically um, sacrifice the goals that I have now of, you know, right now we're trying to move out of this house, buy another house and rent this house out. So I'm definitely, I'm pushing those goals back by going after the card that I just picked up, but I'm really, really glad I did. It, it was, it, it paid off big time. I'm really, really happy about it. I'm really excited about it, but that'll be in another video, but uh, okay. So Collecticon, how was Collecticon? Uh, what did I see? What, what would I have liked to seen? What did I not see a lot of? Um, Collecticon, going into Collecticon, um, I thought that there was no line when we first got there, and then it was wrapped around the entire building going the other direction. So it was hot, I had a really he heavy duffel bag, my uh, briefcase was full, uh, my traps, both my traps are still absolutely destroyed, but the entire time there I was holding everything. What I would do differently, the next Collecticon that I go to, we are gonna be rolling in a big wagon. Uh, so that something that Aspen can sit in, uh, we are also going to have a baby boy at this time next year, uh, who will be five, six months old at this time. So we're going to have two kids uh, going the next time. I don't know if we'll do another family trip like this again, but it was a lot of fun having the girls with me. Um, speaking to that, I've got Aspen in the room with me right now. So she's sitting in the chair with me right now. You may hear her talk or say things or do things. She might even throw some cards around, I have no idea, but I just wanted to go ahead and say that. Uh, I've got her in me, uh, I've got her in here with me, uh, which is really nice to have. I don't always typically do that, but she's in her little swivel chair. Um, so um, yeah, next year I would definitely go in with a large wagon. Um, and it was jam packed. It was absolutely jam packed. It was bigger than it was last year. But one thing that I noticed, I think a lot of people can agree with was there was a lot of selling there. There was more, way more selling there than there was buying. And, and my intentions were really to trade up. I went there really hoping that I would find some grail cards. Oh, you're leaving. Are you going to leave? Okay. Okay. See you later, alligator. Oh, thank you. You're going to close the door? Yes. Whoa. Okay. Um, but yeah, I saw a lot of selling there. Uh, my intentions were really to trade up, um, but it just didn't happen. I didn't find anything there that I absolutely had to have. One of the only cards there that I saw that I actually really, really wanted. Well, there were two cards that I really wanted. Okay, there were three cards that I really, really wanted. There was a Gold Star Umbreon, the English one, not the not the uh, play promos, uh, the Japanese promos that are exceptional. I know those are so much better than the English variants. Um, and really a lot more history behind them, a lot more story behind them. There are a few cards in Japanese that I would really want that are like Grail Trophy cards. Um, but like, I was just talking about this with uh, somebody yesterday on Instagram, like uh, back and forth messaging about just how we got stiff by so many amazing cards um, on the English side. Like there are just so many exclusive cards to Japanese that it, it makes sense why a lot of people want to go full on Japanese. It makes a lot of sense as you work your way up the totem pole of Japanese card collecting, you're going to get to those grail cards that can only be had in Japanese. They, they just aren't, they don't exist in English. Um, so, but anyways, um, there was a gold star PSA 10 Umbreon. That was a pretty incredible card to see. I don't know how many of y'all watched the full video, but if you watch the full video, that was like one of the highlights of the video. The fact that like, just looking at someone's booth, I had no idea that I was going to see a PSA 10 English Umbreon. Like, that was a serious, that was a big deal. And if I was building a PSA 10 Gold Star set, which someday I think I probably will, um, I think I'm starting with the nines. But like everything in this hobby, I slowly get more in tune. I slowly get um, more into it. I'm going after more higher caliber cards. 
And eventually I do think I'm gonna end up going after most of the cards that I own now in PSA 10. But that that's probably gonna be way down the road. I've only been collecting again in this hobby for about four years and some change. Um, and honestly didn't even know what I was doing the first year or two. So I think I'm finally at a place now where I'm very comfortable where I'm at in the hobby. And um, I'm just, I went to this convention trying to trade up on stuff and it just, it didn't work out that way. Uh, but yeah, the, uh, the Umbreon Gold Star PSA 10. There's a PSA 10 Crystal Lugia that Cher over at uh, Collect With Power had. I showed that at the end of the video. That was a pretty amazing card. He also had a PSA 9 Rayquaza, which you guys know I have my BGS 9, but I really, really, really want a PSA 9 Rayquaza. That was the only PSA 9 Rayquaza in the building. So last year for Charlotte Collecticon, there was no PSA, PSA 9 Rayquazas. Uh, no Gold Star PSA 9 Rayquazas. There was only one PSA 10 Rayquaza, and the guy wanted like 55k. Um, this year, there was no Gold Star PSA 10 Rayquaza, which is was my ultimate trade-up goal. I was willing to trade, like, honestly, like my entire Gold Star collection for just that one Gold Star. Um, PSA 10 Gold Star Rayquaza is probably one of my number one top hit lists because of the English side of Pokemon card collecting. Are you shushing me right now? Are you shushing me? My Aspen just popped in the doorway with just, just, just her head peeking out, and she's like, shh. Shh. No. No, this is my show. You don't get to come on my show and tell me to shush. That's very here. Um, but, um, yeah, there were some awesome cards there. I'm kind of surprised that uh, I didn't have a chance to trade up for that Gold Star PSA 10 Rayquaza. Uh, I'm not, I honestly don't think it's something that I'm just talking about that I wouldn't have done. I really think that it's something I would have done. There are a few cards that I really, really want in my collection at this point. And I've realized that I'm not ever going to have it all. So I might as well go after the cards that I really, really want before they become financially unattainable. The Crystal Charizard was one of those. I finally got that in a 10 a couple months back. That was an amazing card. I still, I'm still super humbled to own that card. That is a blessing. I'm very grateful to have the opportunity to own that card. Um, it's funny saying this because back in 2019, a lot of these cards were like a 10th of their value now. So... It's crazy because I'm like, I'm so humble to own this card, but it's just a Pokemon card. It's gone a lot up. It's gone up a lot in value. Prices have gotten extremely inflated. Uh, things have appreciated a lot. We've seen way, way too much hype and way too much growth in this hobby. Honestly, I think a lot of the English cards that I have in high grades that are high value, I think they will come down in price. It just all seems a little bit too good to be true. I know that the pops are super low on some of these cards. Like, you know, 200, 100, 300, but like there's only a couple hundred of them in the entire world graded by PSA in that grade. But I don't know. I, I, I am a little bit worried, you know, that, that things could fall and that I'll end up get, getting stuck with some heavy bags. But we'll just see what happens. So far, so good. The market is really strong on a lot of the cards that I collected. Sweetheart, can you close the door? Are you in? Are you coming in? Okay, are you gonna sit down with daddy? It's Pikachu. It is Pikachu. It's very cute. I love that poster. It's one of my favorite posters. You want to sit here? Come on. Pop squat. Um, I'll hold that for you while you get up. One of my buddies that was there that was vending at a booth had a, um, I think it's a, the Dragon's Exalted. Don't grab that. Don't, don't grab that. Babe. Babe, can you help me out here? Because this is not, so I, I, want, I wanted this to work. I want her to be able to hang out with here, but she's already knocking things off the table. And like, we just figured we'd try this out and see uh, how she was in here. Uh, I'm not going to edit this out because I do think that people should know that like, you try to make all this work while you have your family in the same house. But when she gets a little bit older, she'll probably be able to say, don't touch that. It's okay. Um, it's just stuff. It's just cards. It really doesn't matter at the end of the day. Um, anyways, um, yeah, there's a lot of uh, my buddy. My buddy JD was in there with I think a Dragon's Exalted Secret Rare Rayquaza with a very low pop. Like I think it's like a sub fifty something pop, or maybe even sub thirty something pop. Very very rare Secret Rare uh, Rayquaza uh, PSA ten from Dragon's Exalted. I I, I want to say it's from that set. I'm fairly certain it's from that set. Um, might be might be wrong on that, but anyways, if JD's watching this, he'll correct me. But yeah, I, I saw a lot of amazing cards there. What I honestly didn't see, I didn't see a lot of alt art PSA tens there. 
I, I mean, I saw them, but I didn't see them in the overwhelming fashion that I thought I was gonna see them in. I thought I was gonna see every single booth had at least a couple PSA 10 alt arts from Sword and Shield, mainly like Evolving Skies, the Giratina, the Blaziken VMAX from Chilling Rain, which by the end of the convention, uh, okay, some things that I didn't sell. Guys, I'm gonna go all over the place because this is a recap. I don't really know where I'm starting or where I'm finishing, but um, I wish I saw more alt arts there. I think it confirms uh, that alt arts, people are holding on to them. People are holding on to them. I don't think that the pops necessarily give us the whole story, and I think that there are way more people collecting modern than vintage. That being said, I think you know the 10,000 plus population of some of these cards they're out there, but people are holding on to them. So I think that they're eventually gonna appreciate the Latios Latios, Latios Latios GX was a card that I was looking for at the convention. Um, I really, really wanted to walk out with that card as well as the Blaziken VMAX. Those are two cards that I just really, really like. Like there's a handful of modern cards that I'm like kind of obsessed with. Um, and the Blaziken VMAX from Chilling Rain is one of them. Um, I'm hoping that card starts to come down in price. Uh, I think it's honestly worth about $360. Um, I ended up not working a deal with a vendor and someone came in at the very end of the show right before I was going to close the deal and they bought every single alt art that that vendor had in PSA 10. I was super bummed out about it uh, because I was going to trade my uh, first edition base set Raichu and a PSA 7 for that card with maybe like 20 bucks on or 40 bucks on top, uh, but it just didn't work out. Um, some things that I, I, I wish I'd sold, but I didn't. Um, I have one Crown Zenith uh, Pikachu. It's okay. I mean, as long as if you're in here and you're watching her, it's, it's fine. Um, there's my um, Crown Zenith Pikachu special collection. But the or yeah, special collection boxes. What are those called? Special collection boxes. I had a case of those. I forgot to go back to my car and get it. So I didn't sell that. Um, that's probably okay. Crown Zenith is all, honestly awesome. Crown Zenith is a great set. So I really think that I'll have fun opening those down the road. Um, I've got five Pikachu boxes left, so I might open one of those for our Wednesday night stream. I think Wednesday night, we're gonna be talking about the scanning issues again, and we're gonna be talking about Collecticon. I'm sure you guys have a ton of questions. Even if you don't, we're gonna be talking about it anyways. It's gonna be more of a discussion-based stream on Wednesday, like we'll just be chilling, hanging out. I'll be having a drink of something from the bar, and we'll just talk about stuff. Um, as well as, during the day tomorrow, I will be releasing, I will be uploading a video of one of the most hype cards I've ever bought. It's honestly not the most expensive card I've bought, but it's hype and um, I'm, I'm super excited about it. I've, I'm, I'm really, really excited about it. Also, um, I forgot to mention this at the very beginning of the video, but PSA Vault update. This card is the one that I got from PSA Vault. PSA Vault took about, uh, the card. the card is now here. It's been three weeks and three days total. So it took three weeks and three days for the card to get here. If you take away the three days that it took to get to PSA, it took three weeks total for the card to be hand off to PSA, authenticated, handed off to PSA, sent to the vault, and then ready for release to the vault, and then shipped to me. So all of that stuff outside of getting to PSA's authentication from eBay, outside of that, it took about three weeks on the vault. And today, just today, I got a... Um, Oh, you got your little baby doggy. That's so cute. You look so cute. Um, we got, today I got an email finally from customer service and they said that they're basically backlogged. They're just absolutely backlogged. So I did mention this guys, um, or maybe I didn't mention it, but I got extremely lucky. So apparently it's a 3% withdrawal from the total cost of the card in PSA's vault. But I don't know if they're so backlogged that they just let me withdraw it for free. I withdrew an epic card and saved on taxes and didn't pay the fee from the vault. I withdrew it for free, guys. I literally, like, and I got a great deal on the card. I'm so excited to share what I picked up tomorrow, but I did want to work it into the topics for this video um, that PSA Vault, it's pretty good. And even with 3% fee, if you're getting 2% cash back on your card, 3% fee is nothing to withdraw. There's still a way that you can make money here. And I think selling through the PSA vault, I think their fee is like 9%. It still beats eBay's 13, 14% fee. So 9%, 
it could still be kind of a game changer, okay? Your margins are gonna be much more slim than they were with the eBay vault, but there's still plays that you could make here, and I still think that ultimately, um, you know, right now I wanna focus on looking at houses, we're gonna buy a house, move in, we'll rent this one out, I need to stop buying and collecting high-end stuff. Like, I wanna stay present in the hobby, I would hopefully like to open up maybe some Twilight Masquerade or some Temporal Forces, just for fun. Um, but for the most part, talking about the hobby, watching things we're gonna be talking about auctions um in the next couple days i'll do a video on we've had an amazing week of auctions let me tell you there have been so many amazing auctions coming up and we're gonna go into that i ran into tca gaming um and uh pokey knowledge pretty sure that's his channel's name um i ran into them on the first day of collecticon that's another thing who did i see at collecticon i really didn't see anybody at collecticon i saw pokey gangsta i saw a bunch of my friends a bunch of people that knew me that i hadn't known but now i know i met a bunch of people um that appreciate my content which meant a lot to me guys can i just say that like really really appreciate you guys telling me that you appreciate my content and watch watch my videos and enjoy watching them like I don't know my audience, right? I, I don't know a lot of people that watch on a personal level or in real life. So to start meeting all these people at these conventions and know that they're also local is pretty cool. Like I'm starting to learn what my audience is and feel like I really like my audience. Me and my audience have a lot in common and everybody, if I met you at CollectCon, you are awesome. Thank you for coming up to me. Shout out to all of you guys who made my CollectCon trip that much better. Uh, but again, I ran into TCA Gaming and Pokey Knowledge. Um, what, where was I going with that? Um, don't even know where I was going with that. I was asking if they were looking for anything. Um, lost my I've lost my train of thought oh people that I saw at CollectCon oh uh, yeah I saw them I saw my my boy JD he had a booth um yeah Pokey Gangster um Goaded Pulls uh and then all of the vendors that you guys typically know about if you're in this space and you're going to conventions all of the vendors that were there were there um uh some of them you know I knew but you know, didn't really make any deals with. I tried to break the ice with as many vendors as I, as possible, but it just didn't exactly work out. Are you okay, sweetie? Okay, chew your food, okay? Chew your food. Um, she's so cute right now. She's got a she's got a chocolate chip cookie and she's got our smallest Maltese Cleo sitting in her lap. She looks so cute. In fact, screw it. I'm actually gonna move the whole tripod setup because this is cute. This is adorable. You so cute. Say hi, everybody. I'm hi. cute. I'm cute. Okay, her mouth is full of uh, chocolate chip cookie. Um, but anyways, yeah, saw some great people. Um, okay, things that I got stuck with that I intended on selling and just couldn't. I had two theme decks that I couldn't sell. No, three theme decks that I couldn't sell. An EX Dragon, an EX Legend Maker. They both had tears in them. What I saw there was that the, the vendors weren't interested in any theme decks that had tears. Um, yeah, yeah. just close that door because the washing machine's super loud. Drink your water, Aspen. Um, I love that she's sitting on the play mat. That's, that's a good way to reuse that. Um, what was I saying? Um, Decks you didn't sell. Oh, thank you, babe. Uh, there were some theme decks that I didn't sell. One of them was my Sabrina theme deck, which I did have a couple interested buyers on. Um, but a part of me really didn't want to sell it. I, Sabrina decks are rare. They're cool. They're purple. They've got Alakazam and Sabrina on the front. They're just iconic. They're one of the they're one of the most high value theme decks out there, and I think that they're gonna they're gonna grow very very well. I think that's an easy thing for me to sit on. And what I love about theme decks is unlike booster boxes, a theme deck. I don't have any. I can grab right now. Yeah. Okay. A theme deck takes up very very little space. You know, like you can have these as investments. And also, there's a vendor that that you know we were talking about theme decks, and he mentioned that theme decks are super undervalued. They are. All the cards are mint condition. It's sealed. You get more cards than you get in a booster pack. There's a guaranteed hollow. Like some of them have random reverses that could be very gradable. Um, even though. You know, the reverse is not that big of a deal, except for the legendary collection decks. But yeah, you can store theme decks very, very easily like this. You can stack them, store them. I like the box sizes. I, I don't know. I just feel like they're better investment pieces 
than booster boxes in my opinion. And I think that they're just super undervalued right now. And I don't think they're fully reflected you know, what they should be valued at in the market currently. So I think I'm going to revert back to my old ways um, and eventually start collecting and flipping theme decks more full time again, because that's just what I know. That's what I like. And you should stick with what you know and what you enjoy and what you like to collect. So that way, if you're sitting on stuff, you still enjoy it and have fun with it. Um, so my theme deck sat. The vendors were not interested in my theme decks. Those were tough to move, and eventually I did find a vendor to buy out my theme decks. I sold a couple of them on eBay for um, a slight gain, but I really just wanted to cash out, so I had less stuff that I had to deal with. Just just off of me giving you the view of the rest of the room, y'all can see that I'm clearing out in the game room. Um, not because I want to, but because we are having a baby boy, and although we are gunning to buy another house, it doesn't change the fact that that boy is coming in December and I need to be prepared to have a setup for them. And so this room, it's been fun. Um, but yeah, we're gonna, I'm consolidating and I might have to move everything out of this room for the time being. So I've cleared a lot of stuff out here. Basically, the whole room is emptied out now. It's just this back wall, really. This is like the last of the room that's left. My closet's cleared out. My displays have no boosters on them. So this is pretty much it, guys. Um, I've got all my sealed stuff in the garage. Okay, moving into the next one. It was tough to sell theme decks. Um, it was tough to sell in this empty box. I just sold it when I got home yesterday. Um, but this is the last one, or no, I have I have two more of these to sell, these EX Emerald empty boxes. No one wanted these at the convention. I was kind of bummed out about it. I thought people would share the same appreciation for just the box art. And with all the scanning stuff going on right now, with the CT scanning stuff, I think sealed is, I think sealed is, is in trouble. And I don't just mean vintage. I have an opinion that I think sealed, vintage, and modern will be in trouble, and I just, I just don't want any part in it anymore. Um, I don't even know if I'll buy sealed like I have been. I don't know if I'll ever load the boat on sealed ever again. The fact that people have been, one of the vendors even mentioned that people have been scanning products, that he knows people, friends of his that have been scanning boxes, both in the sports card world and the Pokemon world. So let's not, let's not brush this off like it's nothing, okay? I really hate that the community is trying to brush this off like it's nothing. You know, there are people making it a bigger deal than it is, maybe dramatizing it a little bit, but it's a big deal and it's super unfortunate and it sucks and it takes a lot of the fun out of the hobby, but I don't think it's gonna change, I don't think it's gonna destroy the hobby. I think it's not, I don't think it's gonna ruin the hobby or be the downfall of the hobby. It'll be the downfall in part of sealed products, but not the hobby because people are still gonna find a way, they're still gonna, they're still gonna do openings and be like, this box has been scanned, we're opening it tonight, there's a guaranteed whatever Charizard in this box, um, and we're gonna hopefully pull that card for one of you lucky winners tonight. And they're still gonna do the box break, everyone's gonna know that that card's in the box, but they're all gonna be hoping that they're the ones who get it and pulling the packs. So it'll be really interesting how that moves forward, um, but back to my point of these empty boxes, no risk to this. There's literally no risk to this. It's only the value of the box and the box art and the history of the hobby. And that's why I don't understand why no one wants to collect stuff like this. I mean, it's so cool. This would be a $15,000, $20,000 box, but you can buy the box for the artwork and not have any of the risk or financial disdain um, for a fraction. 100 bucks, you could have an EX Emerald box. Now, this one I have listed for 140 or 150. I think it's still the cheapest on the market, but uh, and the cleanest on the market, but um, yeah. Um, and back to TCA Gaming, we got on this topic because I was talking about how I had this empty Emerald box, and TCA was telling me that there is a market for empty boxes, and he was saying after some of his breaks, He's sold base set unlimited boxes for hundreds of dollars. So it is not wild. Like people want these boxes. And I think, I think theme decks and booster boxes are going to be something that I always continue to collect uh, for the artwork. But I will say what's interesting about theme decks is there's always that sealed value. Maybe this applies to booster boxes too. There's always going to be a sealed value for booster boxes. So maybe that's the light at the end of the tunnel here that all of us, you know, we could still find a light at the end of the tunnel to hold on to our sealed products because uh, at the end of the day, there's still the sealed value, right? Um, okay, what else did I not move? Um, I forgot to sell my first edition Alakazam that I want to replace. 
I forgot to sell my first edition Alakazam. I'm bummed out about it. I was hoping to get like at least break even at 1900 on that card because it's a brand new cert. Um, and I easily could have got 1900 easily. I think I might have been able to get 2k in trade value, but um, it's okay. It's a super clean card. It's got a little paneling line or something on the side of it, which is definitely from the factory, I think. I may end up just keeping it and just saying, dude, stop being so anal and OCD. But guys, I'm super picky. When I buy cards, I don't care if I have to lose money on them or even trade them back or sell them again. It's it's all part of the hobby. It's part of the process is like the hunting and trying to build your picture perfect collection. And my collection for the most part is perfect to me right now. There are very few cards that I feel like I would want to trade out at this point. But anyways, first edition base, I forgot to move some of my first edition base. I had a, a PSA five Chansey. I had a PSA five Clefairy. Um, I did sell all of my raw first edition cards. So that was good. Um, I got those cards for like next to nothing. Be nice to Cleo. Be gentle. Be gentle. She's a small puppy. She's a small baby. Yeah, she's your baby. She's a sweet little baby. I'm really proud of you for being so gentle with her though. I'm really proud of you, Aspen. Um, trying to think what else. Um, CT scanning issue. Okay. Everyone there, people were talking about it, right? Me and vendors were talking about it. It's going to be an issue. We all feel similar about it. People are trying to stay away from sealed. They're still buying it because there's always going to be a market, right? There's always going to be an ignorant um, market out there that just doesn't, isn't even aware in this hobby enough to know that sealed product is being scanned and it will continue to be scanned. So there's always going to be buyers for that stuff. I, you know, I'd be willing to bet that, don't, don't drop that. I'd be willing to bet that 80% of people in this hobby have no idea that scanning is even going on. Um, Maybe even they don't know pack weighing is going on or searching is going on or resealing is going on. They might not think any of that. They might live in a world where they think everybody is, is rainbows and fairy dust and everyone's nice to each other. I don't know. Be careful with her. Be nice to her and be gentle. She's a puppy. She's a baby, sweetheart, just like you. Yeah. Um, oh, gosh. I uh, forgot to sell a couple of those. The Blaziken at the end of the convention was one of the few modern cards that I really wanted, the Blaziken VMAX. I'm really salty about that because that card, I looked it over really, really well. And the guy that was selling it, like he was UV, he was black lighting, UV lighting all of his cards with a flashlight. Like dude was super anal about his collection. Also, shout out to you, bro. If you're watching this, I know we didn't make a deal, but you were super kind to me. And just because like we didn't make a deal is no reason for me to be upset or anything. Like. You were trying to get top dollar for that Blaziken, and I respect it, and I really liked talking to you. Um, your girlfriend, wife, she was super nice to us. She gave Aspen, she like offered to give Aspen like an Elsa card and some stickers. Aspen really likes Frozen, and she's a big Elsa fan, so there was a point where I was like, how much is the Elsa card? But that would have been ridiculous if I walked out of there with just cash and an Elsa card. Um, but um, <clears throat> what else? What else? I mean, was there anything, Diana, that you think um, I might be forgetting here? CT scanning. The the rate just dropped down to $15. I'm going to say that real quick. But Not really. I mean, I just didn't see a lot of people buying. I feel like a lot of people were getting rid of their stuff. More than a lot of people were getting rid of their stuff. Um, a lot of vendors were, were, were offering very, very low. And I think that they were offering very low because they were uh, preparing and, you know, taking their risk levels down. You know, if you're offering 60, 70% of market, your, your risk is a lot lower, right? Because you have some room for stuff to drop and stuff could tank. My mentality whenever I go to Collecticon, and this is no offense to any of you guys if you watch and you're vendors at the shows. This is no offense to anybody. I know when people say that, it's like people say no offense, but they're always offending people. No, I genuinely mean this is no offense to anybody, but when I go into these shows, I go in with the fine mentality that if I sell at 80% or I take an L on some things, I'm going to make money on other things and it's okay because at the end of the day, I would much rather the vendors who are doing this stuff full time, I would rather that they hold the fat bags than I get stuck with the fat bags. So I had a lot of product that I went in there with. I unloaded it. I'm very proud of myself. I used $10,000 to pay down my house, which is great because it's just going to mean we have a smaller mortgage payment when we get another house. Um, 
And Diana was not very happy about that. She wished that I had put the money towards the new house, but I think it's really important that you pay your debts as soon as possible. I think a lot of people would think, oh, you have a 4% rate, why would you even pay your house down? The, the money is so cheap, but I've always been under the assumption that it's best to pay your house off. Pay your house off first, and that's something I've been putting off as I've been collecting a lot of cards. So I'm really, really proud of myself that like Diana can tell you I walked out of that convention like mopey I walked out sad I did not get even get my Blaziken VMAX and that was that that card was cheap to me in terms of everything that I got back so and I really really wanted that card in my collection I like the Blaziken VMAX hot take I like the Blaziken VMAX 10 times more than the Ray and I love Rayquaza than the Rayquaza VMAX from Evolving Skies then the Giratina, the Giratina is pretty good actually. I would say the Giratina and the Blaziken are probably neck and neck. Um, but I like it more than the Umbreon. I really don't get the hype for Umbreon. Like Umbreon is sick, but I don't get the hype for Umbreon. Blaziken, the Blaziken art is better in my opinion and the Giratina art maybe even better than all of them. Like I didn't even like Giratina, but Giratina's grown on me a ton. Uh, there were a ton of Giratina there. There was like, there was one guy who had a bajillion Giratina I think Goaded Poles ended up buying like 20 or 40 of the Giratina 10s. It was like a $20,000 deal or something. It was huge. Um, uh, yeah, Goaded Poles was there. Um, uh huh. Ponchos. Ponchos were everywhere, guys. Ponchos are not rare, okay? Poncho Pikachus were everywhere at the convention almost every vendor had like one poncho okay even if it was raw okay ponchos were everywhere and actually i don't know what do you think of the ponchos they're cute but i just feel like they're common a lot of people were looking at those like the mario ones and then yeah i'm, I'm not ones. i'm not with the mario pikachus i'm not with the mario ponchos at all but i will say y'all know i'm a rayquaza fanboy <sighs> The Rayquaza ponchos are definitely growing on me. If there were some ponchos that I wanted to have, like, like I get it. I know why y'all like ponchos. Like, okay. ponchos are dope. They're they're hype. They're definitely hype beast cards. I think, but I do think that they are going to rise in value a ton. But I think one of the most valuable modern cards that people should want to go after, which I didn't see a lot of them there. I think I saw maybe two or three total there, um, which. There's a lot of them out there, so I don't know why I only saw two or three of them there. But, but the vendor that had that Umbreon, was it the Umbreon had a bunch of them? Didn't he trade in the sealed booster box to buy a bunch of them? Yes, and that booster box was said to be resealed. We caught someone, we didn't catch them in the act of doing anything essentially, but we had footage when we were at Collecticon. Diana, I was working a deal. Diana was the one who was taking the phone and actually seeing the base set booster box. Oh, that box a light on it. That box was resealed. Really? That box was resealed. So the guy, apparently the guy that, that got all the Poncho Pikachus for that base set sealed box, oh that box was resealed. Um, oh I want to say it's like Goldenrod or something. My, my boys were bringing it up in our group chat, but I think uh, one of the many group chats... Um, I want to say Goldenrod, but I don't want to get it wrong. Somebody called out that it was resealed. I don't know if Mint Cards ever got their money back, or maybe they didn't buy it and somebody else did a trade for it. I don't know if that person just got totally screwed. And I feel horrible for them because the, the vendor that was in my video, I I think it was Fortuitous Fortuitous Collectibles. That's the one that had the... Yeah. And, and he had the Gold Star PSA 10 Umbreon, which was, yeah. and all the ponchos. They had a lot of heat, but word is that that box was resealed. I'm not getting into that. I don't know. I don't, I'm not going to say stuff is fact if I don't know it's fact for sure. Um, I, I, and you can't judge a book by its cover. You have to make uh, decisions um, and judgment calls with the information that you have. And I don't have any information other than what people have told me about that box. Anyways, um... A lot of this stuff, like you, you have to watch the the Collecticon video for for any of this stuff to to stick or matter. Um, raw. Uh, oh, okay. Selling sealed product was a nightmare. I'm gonna tell you right now. All you guys that are sitting in sealed product at home that plan to sell stuff locally and go to Collecticon and unload stuff and and like 
You guys are gonna have a lot of fun selling your sealed product, because let me tell you, they didn't want sealed product. No one wants the sealed product, okay? Really? Unless it's Evolving Skies. Evolving Skies was the only reason I was able to sell my duffel bags to like Card Rich and Double A Mint Cards. Um, that was the only way I was able to sell those uh, duffel bags was because they had Evolving Skies too. Uh, and I knew, I knew that. I knew that no one was gonna buy that stuff unless it had, unless I had a bartering token of some sort. So the first duffel I sold with the Evolving Skies booster box, which hurt me to let that box go, but my price was 150. I got 650 for it. Like there is no reason for me to be unhappy with that at the end of the day. I've lost money in this hobby in a lot of ways and I deserve to make some money in a lot of ways too. So that was just one of the many ways I could have made money while I was there and I just decided it was the easiest thing to do. The next day, I used my my case of Evolving Skies sleeves to barter another deal for someone to buy my duffel bag. I don't think that's ever gonna happen again. Next year, I will go and I will probably end up breaking even on all the sealed products that I take there because people are not gonna want them. No one wants sealed products right now. And I don't know if it's because of the scanning thing. I don't know if it's because they just have so much sealed product. And the, the real vendors, like the people that are really entrenched in this hobby and have allocations and distribution, they can get these products still. They don't care about your sealed product. What people want is good slabs. They want good slabs, not six of sevens, and eights really, but they'll barter with you on those. They'll give you 60% for those, but they want good stuff. They want your nines, they want your tens, they want good stuff, okay? Whether it's hype modern or good vintage, that's what they want. Um, they also want raw. It's, everybody wanted my raw first edition uh, singles. Like once I, the first guy I really wanted them, but once I started working the room, Everybody wanted the first edition raw singles. Like those were so easy to get off. Um, I'm glad I took those there because I got that out of out of someone's collection that was in a trash bag. So the fact that I turned a $200 trash bag of cards into over the course of the last couple of years, thousands of dollars. Like I literally turned that $200 bag into thousands of dollars on two separate occasions of Collecticon. The first Collecticon, I had a stack of raw cards that were from that collection and I sold all, I traded all of those for Crystal Charizard PSA 8, which ended up selling and then going to a 10, which I'm really, really hype about because I sold for like five grand and got a 10 for, for 10. So yeah, I spent double the amount of money, but the my PSA 10 Crystal Charizard is immaculate. Um, and you can't say that for all older certs, but I've been really picky with my older certs. Um, and then this year, I, I sold just the last couple of the nicer first editions, and I was still able to make like $1,000 off of those first editions at the show. Um, I'm trying to think. All right, so empty boxes don't sell. Um, First edition mid lower grade cards um, that are slabbed don't really sell. I think if they were raw, the vendors would have wanted them. But I think like for some reason, mid grade cards that are slabbed, like vendors just don't want them. But if they're raw, they'll take them for sure. Most likely due to the fact that it's a weight storage thing. Um, guys, if you have a large raw collection and you want to get it graded, but you don't think it's going to mint, don't get it graded. It's not worth it. Don't waste your money on graded. If I could go back, I wouldn't have done a submission with CGC. Um, I would have still done my submission with PSA though. PSA, even though it was my friend that did the first large submission for me, all my cards that came back from PSA did make money. All of my cards that came back from CGC, they didn't do that well. Nobody wants CGC. Nobody there wanted CGC. And I had a really hard time getting rid of my CGC slabs. So I officially only have one CGC slab in my entire collection. And you know what it is? It's a sentimental card. It's the Celebrations Charizard that Diana and me pulled. It was one of the first modern openings that we did, opening Celebrations. And we pulled that Charizard on like one of the last packs. So I think at the end of the day, um, I sold my Metal Celebrations UPC cards, the Pikachu and the Charizard. I didn't really want to get rid of those, but they weren't great grades and it was CGC, so I just said screw it. Um, but I kept my Charizard from CGC because it's a CGC 9. Maybe I could crack it and send it to PSA and possibly get a 10. Um, 
I don't know. Or maybe I'll just buy a Celebrations tent at some point, but I don't really care that much about Celebrations anymore. It was fun when I first came back into the hobby, but at the end of the day, it's just reprints of the cards that we love most. So, and for me, that's my first edition Charizard. Like, that's the card. That's one of the few cards that I need in my collection. Um, but yeah, um, back to the scanning services. The rates went down to $15. I know this is like the very end of the video. So it's like, great, Orion, you're talking about one of the hotter topics right now, but you're doing it at the end of the video. But I didn't forget. Uh, the, uh, the scanning company, industrial, whatever, whatever they're called, they, they have their rate now to $15 for a single pack. $15. You're telling me modern isn't at risk? Guys, this is not good. This is not good. So the rates just came down way too soon. Those rates are going to come down even further if they successfully can run this company. If they can pull this off, those rates are going to come down further. This is going to become normalized. It's going to become a part of the hobby. In my opinion, I don't think that this is something that's just going to go away that we can just brush off. Um, and I do think it's going to, you're going to see it at these next conventions. You're going to see the impact that it's had. You're going to see that people don't want sealed product and they're having a really hard time selling it. Evolving Skies, Lost Origin, Astral Radiance, any of those good sets, Sun and Moon boxes, I would say are pretty safe too. Some of the best sets, they're going to have a sealed value that is just, it's just going to be the sealed value. And I think they're going to be pretty safe. But all these other boxes, I think for Scarlet and Violet, it's going to be Paldea Evolved is kind of the evolving skies of Scarlet and Violet. I think that those boxes will hold up okay. But everything else, I think there's going to be, it's going to have a sealed value, but I think it's, there's always going to be the liability with the scanning. So the resale value and the market value of things appreciating a ton and quickly is out the window. Unless it's the best set of the year or the block, I don't think it's going to appreciate the way people think it's going, it's going to. Um, I think I touched on everything. This has been a super long video. I'm really glad I got a long ranty video and it's been a while since we did that. Um, again, we have an epic card that I'm going to reveal tomorrow. I'm super excited about it, guys. I'm like, I'm so excited about it. Like, I couldn't be more excited about it. Like, that's like, I'm so excited. Um, and ashamed of myself, but I'm so excited. Um, I, I, uh, I don't have any credit card debt though any longer. Um, that gets paid off. My, my card I pay off uh, this week when I get my check. But um, I definitely, this the card that I'm gonna reveal tomorrow is really expensive. And it was probably irresponsible, the fact that I'm trying to, we're trying to buy a house right now. But um, Diana knows that I really, really wanted this card. And I think even though she gets upset at me when I buy stuff like this sometimes, she she's genuinely happy that I finally have this card. I'm, I'm really excited about it. Uh, anyways, that'll be tomorrow. CT scanning, we're gonna be talking about that down the road, but I just wanted to acknowledge the fact that I know that their rates came down and that's gonna continue to be an issue. Uh, Collecticon went really, really good. Cashed out, sold a lot of stuff. Didn't see a lot of alt arts there. I also didn't see, guys, this is interesting and I think the CT scanning issue is tied into this too. I didn't see hardly any packs or booster boxes at Collecticon. It was all cards. Cards and slabs and special collection boxes, right? Um, with like like exclusive Japanese promos and things of that sort. Um, but I didn't see a whole lot of like base set boxes and Jungle and Fossil and Aquapolis and Sky Ridge. Last year at Charlotte Collecticon, we saw tons. We saw a boatload of that stuff. Um, and I'm kind of happy because I think I think these these companies and these sellers that have kind of monopolized this part of the market, like with sealed packs, you know, you've got loose packs and you've got, um, I'm not gonna say all the people that are breaking boxes, but they, but we all know who they are. They're breaking all these expensive boxes. They're making a, they're making a crap ton of money on having people buy into these box breaks, even though people are risking a lot of money to do that. They're, they're making a ton of money off of it. What I like about the scanning thing, and you, you know, I don't like, I don't wish for people to fail, but I do think that there's a balance in everything. And this hobby, the whole scanning thing just balances out the fact that people thought that they were going to make full time money the rest of their life by doing box breaks, by taking advantage of the fact that people are going to buy in and gamble on a box break. Um, I do find it kind of, um, 
comforting to know that box brakes are way sketchier than they used to be because now we can scan stuff. Now, again, like I said before, I think people are just gonna roll with the scanning and they're gonna be like, this box has been scanned. It has a confirmed Rayquaza Gold Star, EX Deoxys. Let's get into it. And then they're gonna break open the box. That might be the future. There's no way around it. And if it comes to that, we'll all just have to accept it. But um, for now, uh, best thing we can do is kind of boycott it, kind of say that it's messed up, um, and have a stance on it that we don't want our products to be scanned. Uh, anyways, Collecticon recap. I hope I answered everything. I'm sure I missed some stuff. It was really not as much fun for me as I wish it was. It was a lot more work than it was fun. Uh, and I'm hoping next year will be different. I will say, I really appreciate you guys watching and I appreciate you guys supporting the channel. Uh, we've almost got 6,000 subscribers. Super stoked about that. Um, and, um, yeah, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace. Uh, we're going to be talking about the scanning coming up in the future videos. We're going to be talking about some epic auctions that will be coming up uh, in the future video. And, of course, this card that I just picked up that I'm super excited to show you guys. And then we've got our Wednesday night live stream. I'll see you guys there. Peace. Thank you for watching.